Good morning. It's Monday the 2nd of October 2023. My name is Nikki. This is the Sheepish Podcast and I'm going to share the next, hmm, could be quite long, X amount of minutes <laughs> sharing with you, showing you my creative uh, results from September. Is that a bit of a weird... <laughs> I'm not going to record this again because it's surprisingly hard to come up with an intro when you don't have like a um, a standard intro and yeah with me nothing is standard so welcome to you if you're a new viewer thank you for jumping in and taking a risk on a new podcast if you're a returning viewer thank you so much for coming back and can I just also say Thank you to everybody who left such lovely comments on the September List podcast. I hadn't done it in a long time. As many of you know, I've had some family challenges, some ill health and so on. And so I'd stepped right back from it all. And just at the beginning of September, I just thought, oh, let's just do it. Let's just throw one out there and see if anyone is still interested. And I had such a lovely response. It so warmed my heart and encouraged me to carry on. So here I am again. Excuse me, just a moment. Honey. Hey. Thank you. Honey, my dog. Most of you know Honey. I put a clip of her at the beginning. She's lying on the sofa behind me, which is lovely. But she's got into this horrible habit of biting her nails. Can you use stop and grow on dogs? Hmm. No, just kidding. It's just something she does, which is strange. I don't clip her nails, but she walks a lot on pavement, so they're not super long. I think it's just something she does because she knows it irritates me when I'm not paying attention. To... <laughs> okay, I've got sidetracked already, haven't I? So yes, I'm uh, in the UK. I should have said that. I do have uh, a bit of a virus, a bit of a coldy bug. Um, so I'm going to record in two parts today. I'm going to record the knitting section first, then I'm going to give myself a little break and have um, a rest, and then I'll record the stitching and sewing, quilting, and all the other bits and bobs, as well as I'll do a little life update, but I was writing the list, and this looks like it's going to be quite long. However much I try to keep these at a reasonable length, um, really for, you know, my energy levels as much as for yours. They always end up long, but pff, hey, I love long podcasts and I know a lot of you do. So, and you can always chop them up, can't you, and watch them in segments. Anyway, I waffle, I digress. I'm going to jump straight into the knitting. Now, just as I uh, jump straight into the knitting, she says, and review, this is my book. And if you'll remember, I had uh, plans for September. So I shared with you my list of plans and things I wanted to get done for September. Again, the beginning of this book, the front ooh, five pages, is a list of things I want to achieve up until my next birthday. So I wrote the list in July this year, and it is 60. There's 60 things on there, mostly things I want to make, finish, um, some jobbies I want to do, some things in the garden, projects, and then there's a whole list of books as well because I, I write out a list of books that I want to read. Um, it's not complete. I've only got 15 on here and I actually, when I went to London, bought another bag load. <laughs> so they're my books. So I will chat a little bit about books later. But getting on to knitting. So the first knitting object on the September list was to add two rows or 30 squares to my Squiddle Village blanket. So this is my cosy memory blanket I'm making with the Squiddle Village yarn from Kelly and Nick at Lay Family Yarn. They did a yarn club, is it last year? I think it was last year, with a set of minis and I would buy the minis each month and the idea was to do a row a month, um, which didn't quite work despite best efforts. So. I didn't get on as planned, as well as I planned this month, partly because I got a little bit distracted by other things like pumpkins. But anyway, <laughs> and another, 
oh, another cast on as well. But, um, and then when I did sit down to have a real go a week ago, I thought I've got to get at least one row done. Um, I ran out of yarn. <laughs> I ran out of the, um, I'm using the Drops Nord as my contrast. I'm doing it um, like jewels, like lovely jewels, so sweet Violet um, has done her happy patchwork blanket. I swiped that idea. Um, so I'll show you how far I got. I'm not going to be too hard on myself because I did a huge amount of work in September. This was, this is my chocolate fudge, br fudge brownie. See, I still struggle. Look how cute is that? Quite appropriate as I'm slimming. <laughs> so that's where I was. And I did one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So uh, I went from here along to here. And if you're new, let me just show you. That's how deep I am, how many rows I've done. So I've got three more, three more to do to finish this row. So again, I picked the colors. Um, I was doing them a month at a time, so a month per row. But the <laughs> one of the bags I was keeping the minis in split and they all got muddled up. So now it's pretty much every man for himself. I just grabbed the mini that I think will work. So this end, I've got quite a few bluey purples. So I might, I think that's probably why I put the yellow in there. So it would just be a question of mixing up the colours. So my goal for this month, for October, is, oh, I should have said, happy October. <laughs> um, my goal for this month is, what have I put here? Finish that row, so the three squares plus another row, so actually what I was hoping to get done in September. And there's 15, 15 blocks per row, so it's 18 blocks, uh, 18 squares I want to get done. So that's that first item. So I'm kind of amalgamating this into a review of September plus the October list um, where they cross over. So that was that one. Okay. I'm sorry, I'm a bit sniffy, I do apologise. It was either that or not podcast, not record. And I really wanted to try and stick to my plan. So the next one was, oh rats, I left, oh, typically I left something behind, didn't I? Um, blip, 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 just a second, I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Right, what I wanted to fetch was this book. Operation Sock Draw. I say it's by the Knitmore Girls. It's a curated collection published by the Knitmore Girls, but it's a whole mix of designers. I've spoke about this book last time, and it's, I mean, who wouldn't want a sock drawer like that? But just without knitting that colour work with those socks. <laughs> Jenny Hen, isn't it? I'll eat the bread, but I don't want to collect the wheat. Right. Gosh, it's going to be one of those things today, isn't it? So these are the these are the Wonderland socks. No, they're not. They're the Funhouse socks. I call them Wonderland because that's the yarn that I use, the self-striping yarn from the sock badger. Um, that's the sorry, I'm getting it all wrong. I'm so sorry. The yarn badger. And it's uh, merino nylon with sparkle. So I used that as, as a contrast. And then I used a Hue Loco Blue Tweed, which is absolutely gorgeous. And this is called Sky, and it's her tweed sock. Yeah. And the socks... I was going to make were those and these were the ones if you'll remember that I started according to my little project card 
30th of July 2021. So I chose those as a pair of socks to get finished and off the needles in September. And I did! Yes! And here they are. All blocked and everything. Da da da! There you go. There they are. In all their glory. So if I just have one close up so you can see. So you can see how the self-striping yarn has progressed. So it looks like I've used much more colours than I have. And then you can see, that's better, you can see the colour work design in there. But can I also point out that the colour work is also on the underside of the foot. Is that the instep? So it goes all around, all along the bottom as well. So yeah, so you do the, it's a heel flap and gusset and you do the decreases within the colour work. I'm saying that because I feel a little bit proud <laughs> of myself for doing that. But, I mean, you know, they're lovely, aren't they? They really are gorgeous. What a great pair of socks. There you go. So they are... The Fun House Socks. So that is an FO from September. Really, really pleased about that. And relating to that, I'm going to do a giveaway this month because you can. I'll talk about it more, but you'll see at the end of the episode, but you'll see that I've got a lot, a lot of the yarn. There's easily another pair of socks left in those two. There must be probably 60 grams, 50 grams, something like that. It's not taken a lot because I don't have huge feet and yeah, you've got at least two half skeins there. So I'm going to be giving those away to anyone who fancies doing a pair of socks, either combining those or just two pairs of shorties. I'm also adding something else to that, so stay tuned for that. But that are, they are, that is, the Funhouse Socks. Oh, I should have said they're by Lisa K. Ross who is uh, better known as Paper Daisy Creations. I believe she is, or well, it doesn't say it here, I'm pretty sure she's Paper Daisy Creations. Um, but Lisa K. Ross, um, that is the book. So that was something I could tick off September's list, which is brilliant. Right, so the next bit of knitting was there wasn't a lot of knitting actually on the list because at the time I wasn't didn't really have my knitting mojo but it came back with a vengeance in, in September maybe it was the weather season changing the weather could be so I have actually got quite a lot of knitting I will talk first though from we talked about this in September the 1908 top I'll try not to knock the table. I did think about trying to podcast. I'd love to record down in the Wendy house, but it's quite a long way down to the bottom of the garden. <laughs> and I'd have to take all this stuff. I'd have to use the wheelbarrow. Or buy one of those little trolleys that I could take down. So I thought, no, for the moment at least, we'll, we'll record in here. So I was going to make a start. I don't think I'd started on the 1908 top, which I will show you a picture of by Thea Coleman, who is known under the moniker Baby Cocktails. So that was the that gorgeous short sleeved cable top. I had the yarn all set and it's 1908. Absolutely gorgeous. I totally love that. And actually, you can tell that I totally love that because it's been a real challenge. And I have prevailed. I have prevailed. It won't look like it. Um, the yarn I will show you I'm using is Durerum Natura in Gilead, ugh, which is their worsted weight yarn. And this is a beautiful, um, lovely woolly yarn, but not at all, um, I say rustic, it's rustic 
as in it's wool and spun and it's French merino and it's beautiful. Um, it's not your kind of um, um, merino that the hand dyes use. It's a, um, oh, I don't know. It's, um, and it's all organic, I believe. Um, merino dal, which is the French merino, plus merino noir petra which is from a sheep in Portugal. So I'm wondering with the noir, because that is black in French, whether they, they dye this on a slightly darker base to get this lovely raspberry color. It's such a pretty color. And it's called Bois de Rose, which is rosewood, wood of rose, pink, wood pink, something like that, anyway. So, this is how far I've got. You remember I posted on Instagram, I was knitting. It took me a while, I had to, I taught myself to cable without a cable needle, which is fine. If you're doing two by two or one by one cables, it's fine. But when you come to doing a pattern like this, where you've got a one by two and a two by one, um, and a twisted and a not twisted, it's a little bit more discombobulating. So it took me quite some time to get my head around how to do it without a cable needle. So I was worth having to work back quite a lot and tink back. But here we go. So the progress. <laughs> but this is really a lot of progress and I will tell you for why, okay? I had knit up to there. I had done how many rows? I'd done a, rep a pattern repeat is 14 rounds. So I'd done all the rib and then I'd done 14 rounds. I've done the first pattern repeat. And there were a couple of errors I'd spotted as I learned as I went along. Um, I'd spotted some errors and one or two you can leave, fair enough. Um, nobody was going to really notice. Um, I went and go into them, but they were very subtle and they were right at the bottom. So, you know, I thought, no, that's fine. But then I realised I'd actually got the pattern repeat completely wrong. Uh, it's quite, I would say it's quite challenging. I mean, I don't knit a lot of cables, um, but I'm a fairly competent knitter. But it really, I really didn't get my head around the instructions in the cable pattern. And I did end up going back onto Ravelry to read any notes, and I'm clearly not the only one. Um, because there was some terminology and I didn't quite get what she was referring to in the pattern. And I'm sure, right, there's a buzzy thing. Um, it's just a question of experience. I didn't have experience of, of the terminology in terms of panels, rounds, bits, and this and that and the other. So I had actually got the pattern, the different panels you repeat, I'd got that wrong, um, which was a little bit huge, really. I mean, it looked fine, but I had got them in the wrong order. Plus, and this is really weird, I really didn't like the look of my cast on. So I had done the German twisted cast on, which for the most part I really like, but it just didn't look right. I don't know whether again I'd, I'd had a bit of a, a brain fart and it just hadn't worked nicely. So um, in the end I took the view and I frogged and it was a skein's worth, it was a ball's worth of yarn. I frogged the entire thing and I started again. And it took me three more attempts and three more ripping backs to get the set up. To get the setup row right, but now I have, and I'm exceedingly happy about it, and I'm very excited to carry on knitting. So, you know, so it's not just rib in the setup row; it's actually the beginning of the pattern because the cables run into the rib at the bottom, honestly. And that probably that whole exercise probably took me the best part of two to three weeks to get up to here, to get back again, to knit, to rip, to knit, to rip, to knit, to rip, to knit. 
So, if at first you don't succeed, boys and girls, don't give up. Well, it depends. If you really don't like it and you're fed up, just give up. <laughs> but um, I really love this sweater and I really want to make it. So I persevered and I nailed it. That said, I did put it down for a rest for a week or so. So now I've got to get my head around it again. But that is now high on the October list of projects. And I want to make some progress, some more progress on this. Because, you know, I did make progress. I learned... I'll keep my hand that in front of my thing. Look. I did make... <laughs> I did make progress, but... Um, in terms of experience and learning and patience. I think I mentioned last month that I really feel God is working in my life to build on my, build my patience. Um, so yeah, that was another lesson. So stop waffling. Uh, that's the 1908 top by Thea Coleman. It's on Ravelry or probably on Thea's website. And I will be making progress on that. And it's in this lovely, um, what bags are these called? Isn't that pretty? A madder root. That's right, that's a madder root bag. It's nothing fancy. It's sim simple linen. There's no zip or anything. And you do have to be careful because the needles can poke through this fabric. But it's very light and very nice to carry around. So... That was my experience, and that was the only other bit of knitting on my September list, actually. Like I said, I really didn't think I'll be doing as much knitting as I've done. So, let's go on to some, some new friends, shall we? Um, that I worked on, but they're also now on the October list, so this is new stuff. So let's turn my page. October list, right. One of the things I wanted to make, and I, I planned this way back at the beginning of the year, but I'd kind of put it to one side. I bought the yarn and put it to one side. This is a gift. It's a birthday present for my sister. She doesn't watch this, so it's gonna be fine. And uh, it's the Apple Pie Hat by Tin Can Knits. It's not a new pattern, it's quite an old pattern. 2014 on here. It is a paid for pattern, but I have knit this before. That's that's it. It's so beautiful. Again, see the cable thing going on here? There's even oh, it tells you on. As with tin can knits, they obviously do sizes from naught up to hundred years old a little bubba one so I made this a few years ago and it was lovely but at the time I was a fairly new knitter and didn't understand about my gauge and my the hat turned out really quite short from brim to crown um, and I've realized since it's because my row gauge is quite small um, but anyway it was a lovely hat I decided to knit this for my sister. There's a little bit of background here. Uh, those of you who've watched The Holiday with Cameron Diaz, Kate Winslet, uh, Jack Black, and what's his name? Jude Law, of course it is. Um, Cameron Diaz wears a really cabled cream colored Aaron cardigan. And I think it's called the Amanda cardigan, I'm not sure. But my sister absolutely loved that. Oh, she loved it from whenever she saw the film, which was years and years ago. And she knits a little bit, and she's never been able to find a pattern that really matches up to it. I don't think, I've not really looked, to be honest, but she wasn't able to find an actual pattern for that. I'm sure it probably is out there somewhere. Anyway, I noticed last year when I was watching the film again, because I'm a rewatcher at Christmas, that she also wears a cream cabled hat, which is incredibly like the apple pie hat. Close enough. So I thought, I'll knit that for my sister for her birthday. It's not a huge project. My sister's quite particular. 
So I learned long ago not to make anything too big for her because, um, you know, well, she's particular. But I thought the hat can't go wrong. So I did buy, I actually bought some big box yarn. It's an Aran weight pattern and I bought King Cole 100% wool Aran weight. And you can see that. Pretty standard. Oh, cream shade 5040. And it's 100% superwash wool, 196 yards or 180 metres. So I bought two balls of that from, I don't know if I got it from our local hobby craft store or whether I bought it online. But anyway, I got that. And so this month, because I was finding my knitting mojo, mojo, my knitting mojo, um, I decided to cast it on. And this is how far I've got which isn't at all bad there you go that is where I've got to and you'll see there look at my really cute autumn stitch marker that little ghost oh come on where am I going that little ghosty with his apple cider donut is I think a super super miniatures one and he actually does glow in the dark but I just put him there because he was cute <laughs> I've also got my stitch guards, pointer things on there, which are also super cute. Look at those. To stop the stitches falling off. These were a Christmas present from my son's girlfriend. I mean, what a win, eh? Anyway, this hat, I've actually done more than would seem because it is a double brim. It's a turned brim. So you have to net five inches it is five inches, I think, of, oh, I haven't put the, looking at the wrong instructions. Let's have a look. I won't give away too much, because as I said, it's a paid for pattern, yeah. So you do two by two rib for five inches, and then you turn it through, and knit another round, picking it up. You're actually supposed to do a provisional cast on, but I missed that. Missed that memo. So I just had a cast, so I turned it up and I just picked up a stitch as I went along from the bottom, had it under there and knit it together with a stitch at the top. So I've got, oh, it's so thick and chunky. I've got, yeah, <laughs> I've got quite a big head and also it's on this short cable so um, I won't be able to try, but you can see, you can get an idea of what that's going to look like. It's going to be so squishy and lovely. And the wool is fine. The, the wool knits up fine. It's not a luxury yarn, but it's certainly a good hat yarn, I would say. Oh, look what I've done to my <laughs> ever. So yeah, I'm looking, and if you look at the brim, uh, sorry, the crown, it's so, it's going to look so lovely. That's going to be fun, isn't it? Decreasing in cables, but I'm sure it'll be fine. So yeah, that's the apple pie hat by Tin Can Knits. I'm using King Cole yarn, and I've actually got it in. Oh, I'm I'm using Zings Knit Pro Zings, and I've gone up a needle size because I do have a small gauge, so I didn't want to risk it being too small for her. So and they're on just circulars. Um, I've got here, here we go, Knit Pro Zings, five and a half, 40 centimetres. And I bought these when I bought the yarn because I'm in a right state with my needles, they're in a right mess, I need sorting out. I've got loads of interchangeables. I do love my higher hires, I have a higher hire set. Um, but I never, at the moment, because I've got so much on the needles, I can't find the sets I need or the needles I like. The needles I need or the Lycos um, yeah so I bought those anyway and this is in a lovely project bag made by a friend of mine who is Jan who is on uh, she's the faithful sheep crafts look at that isn't that so pretty and I love the fact she's used brown string for the drawstrings and that, there we go she's put a little wooden thing on can you just about read that? She doesn't have an Etsy shop. She's toying with the idea of it. 
but I love that and it's quite a thick heavy duty cotton so that's that one so that was my first cast on let's just put that away okay keep that together hope I'm not shaking the camera too much quick top up okay so the next thing I'm working on through October which will hopefully then be a finished object at the end of the month is in my Emma Ball bag which I really love really love the Emma Ball bag and these are such good value they're such good value and there are, there's a shop in Scotland that sells these that I think does ship internationally because someone when I showed this a while ago said they couldn't get them but I can't for the life of me. I used to follow them on Instagram. If I can remember, I'll put the link. I'll try and link everything below anyway and put the details there. But it's a great, it's a great bag. And I think it was about £12. It's just crazy. And you can see the inside has got kind of that thing there. So I picked up, because of my fail with the, oh, okay, not fail, with the 1908 sweater, the 1908 top, I went back to a project that I'd started in the spring and stopped when it got really hot um, and I decided to pick it up again and it's one that I've been planning to knit for so long and I'm going to set the pattern is just over here oh. I'll be talking to you about my dress as well in the sewing bit so this is the Koivua sweater by Caitlin Hunter, Boylan it was another oldie, an oldie but a goodie, have I got a picture of it? I'm sure you probably all know it anyway, got a very small picture of it here, if I can, it's so, mm, it's not really very helpful but you'll see it, my version, there you go, you probably all recognise that, it's an oldish pattern again oh not that old 2019 it's always useful when you put the copyright at the bottom of the pattern isn't it and I'd seen a version of this on Ravelry I love the design and I'd seen a version of this on Ravelry where someone had used a plain colour as the background and then they'd use spin cycle yarns for the contrast colour so I splashed out this was a real splash out last year um oh look i found the tag for my emma ball bag and it tells you her website on the back look so that's her website but there are shops that sell these as well so i decided to buy this was oh beginning of last year possibly i splashed out and I bought some Harrisville yarns, Harrisville Designs Nightshades. Uh, and I bought the stiletto colourway. So the nightshades yarn, again, nothing spectacularly new here. But this is the colourway. I should have brought it in the skein, but I wasn't thinking. This my cold. Can you see? It's almost black, but it's got a a pinky, it's got, oh, I don't know if you can see. Yeah, you can see just those little pink flecks in it. So what they do, they give you a black yarn, but they add flecks, they spin flecks of one other color in there, but really subtle. So it actually gives it an overall purpley effect. Um, but I oh, just love this so much. The yarn actually, I think, is really reasonable. It's it's um, spun in New Hampshire, it's wool and spun, it's American Cormo and wool, uh, 250 yards to 100 gram skein, and it's DK, what is it DK? Who knew? I thought it was worsted. <laughs> DK. But I'm knitting up a worsted gauge, let's put it that way. So that's the nightshades, and then the spin cycle, I bought the colourway was Verba Volant or Verba Volant, which is that one. Now, I bought these, 
I bought two and they were a discontinued line. So I bought these two, I don't know, about two years ago. I picked them up, I think it might have been from Loop, possibly in London. Um, and they were reduced because they're a discontinued line. So I bought two. And then when I came to, when I decided to use them on the Koi Vua sweater, uh, I needed another one. So I managed to track down another one from Fig Tree Yarns in the Channel Islands uh, in Jersey, as in Jersey Channel Islands, not Jersey, USA. And I bought one, but it's much brighter. So I think these were either pale or they've been in the light and faded. So it stumped me for a while because I wasn't sure how to integrate the second one that was a bit brighter in with these two. The way I'm going, I'm not even going to need the second or uh, the third one, but we'll see. We'll have to see. Um, I won't bother you and go and get the third one that's a lot brighter, but we'll see. The plan is if I needed to, I was going to use the brighter one on the sleeves. Um, but you know, hopefully I've got I've finished all the colour work on the body now. So I've only got the sleeves to go. And I think, where did I put the thing? The colour work, if it's like the body, it doesn't go all the way down the sleeves. Let's have a look. No, I think, I think I'm gonna do it with the two skeins. Because if you look at that, oh, you don't need to see this, but that's where I'm at up on the, where I split the sleeves. So it's only this bottom bit, which is natural, which is the main colour, and then there's a bit of colour work around the cuff. I don't know if you can see that. So anyway, that was, um, that's the Dream State, which is their worsted weight. And these aren't cheap yarns, especially in the UK, because obviously they have to be shipped over. But I managed to pick these up at a bit of a discount. And so, it's the sweater, enough of the the yabbering. Let's have the sweater. Let's hold it up because I really, really love this. Ta da! Uh, let's do. Uh, there we go. Bring it back there. So it's got a high neck. Is that got, got a mock, a mock turtleneck? I don't know. No, not a mock. Anyway. And then you can just about see the graduation of the colour through spin cycle. Oh, it's so pretty. So let me stand up and I can probably hold it a bit closer. Not sure if it is showing up in this light. Um, and then that's, yeah. So this is all, um, there's pearl bumps and pearl pattern there as there are just in that bit there. So... You can see, and it fits me really nicely. And it's sitting just on my belly button at the moment. If I can come up. So I've got probably two inches of rib to do. And then the sleeves. And I absolutely love it. I can't tell you how much I love this sweater. I'm just praying that we have a cold winter. Gonna have a cold winter. If you can see the slight pink tinges in the the Harris for I'm sorry. There's honestly Henry has been gone for a few months now, and there's still signs and Honey's hair of him on these sweaters. This is. Can you see the slight pink tinge there? I'm not sure if you can. But anyway, beautiful Koivua sweater by Caitlin Hunter, Boylan Knitworks, who I'm sure you all know, you probably all know this sweater, but I oh, just adore that. So I was hoping to have got the rib done um, before the podcast, but didn't quite manage it. I wasn't sure if I was gonna have to add extra length to it, but it turned out okay. So that's another one for October's list. So that's hopefully gonna be finished to show you because I have a very special sweater I want to cast on by the end of the year, probably just after Christmas. And I want to get that and the 1908 top off the needles before I start this very involved colour work sweater, which I'll talk about nearer Christmas. 
So that was the Koivua. The other thing I'm, I've not cast on yet, but I'm going to cast on, is another colour work hat from Millerocky Hides, which is a Kate Davis book. Again, patterns curated by Kate. They're not all by Kate. And I made, if you follow me on Instagram, you will have seen, let me find it. And actually, it was Ruth from Ruth Loves to Knit who prompted me to pull out this book. I've had this book a while. I've got most of Kate Davies' books because I just really like them. Um, and who wouldn't? Uh, so for the Ruth Loves to Knit podcast, dust off, dust off your books. No, can't remember what it was. A knit along. I think it's still going on. She called you to choose a pattern from your bookcase rather than from Ravelry. So one that you've had for ages and that you've meant to knit but haven't knit or that's in a book, a collection. So, and I had the Miller Rocky Tweed yarn to knit this one, which is the Braywick Tam. And these, these hat styles suit me so much better than beanies. I got really distracted the last few years with beanies, but I realized that the Tams and the Berets are just so much better So this was the Braywick that I made and I finished this before September so it's not really a finished object but I thought I'll show you because I just feel so much happier wearing these. You can't see it can you? That's ridiculous. Can I turn around? Can you see that? Not you. No it's alright I'm not going anywhere. Her niece now all excited because I was facing her and talking to her. So yeah, anyway, I'm going to mess up the hair again. I wanted to make a second tam. I want to have a collection of, oh dear, oh very dear me. Um, I wanted to have a, a collection of tams to wear this, um, this winter. So the next one I'm going to make from this book is called the Tetergausch, which I looked up the pronunciation and it's... Um, Named for the Tetergausch State Park in Minnesota. So even though it's colour work and kind of got the Scottish feels. And it's by Virginia Sattler Raymer. Virginia Sattler Raymer. There you go. And then the hat is that one. It's got the corrugated rib, which I love. The two colour rib around the border. Um, is there a better... Yeah, you can see. There you go. That's the back. Isn't it pretty? Those, those, um, that blue, tealy blue is so beautiful. And the Miller Rocky Tweed, the Kate Davis Miller Rocky Tweed is a dream to work with. It's one of my all time favourite yarns. So we've got, and it's so reasonable. It's so reasonable to buy. We've got those two. Green I hadn't quite got the right orange so I'm using a burnt orange and then the tealy blue so I had all those those ones and I just had to buy that one the horseback horseback brown and so you can see so this is like a light uh, fingering weight but it's woolly and it's tweedy and it's absolutely beautiful. I've got a top made out of this and it's lovely. It's 70% wool, 30% mohair. You wouldn't know. I think the mohair is probably in it to give it strength because it's quite fine and it's sort of almost a thick and thin spun. But you can see how beautiful it knits up. I mean, it's just, and it's as light as anything. Light. Don't lose your tease. There you go. So that's an on, on the October list. So that's two hats, isn't it? That's the apple pie hat and the tetergauche hat. Okay, that's those. What have we got next? See, we're going to be a good hour with knitting, aren't we? Oh, heavens above. Never mind. Okay, one of the other things that was on my list of knits for the year July to July next year was the Nicole shawl, which is one that I came across, again, old pattern. I'm really finding that I'm, 
I'm not being distracted too much by all the new pretty bright designs. I'm actually finding designs that I really want to work with and, and want to have. So I watch, I follow Sarah from Fibertrek and she does um, lovely, lovely podcasts. And I also belong to her Patreon. So you get a few bonus ones in there. And I've been inspired to a lot of things by Sarah. She's another multi-crafter. She quilts. She does a lot of beautiful artwork, which I haven't even got to yet. I have started, but... Um, and uh, knitting. She's very into place-based yarns. But it's a lovely, calming, soulful podcast if you want something gentle. And she lives in a beautiful place in northern Maine um, and does a lot of sort of naturey photography. But anyway, she had knit, she is very good friends with Nicole. I can't say Dupre, it's not Dupre, is it? Does this tell me? It doesn't tell me. Here it is. Nicole Dupre, the gentle knitter, for whom this shawl was designed. And it's designed by Amy Cher. And it looks like it's produced or published by Hinterland. But it's basically that. Um, and I really, just really fancied one really snuggly, rustic, willy willy, willy willy shawl for this winter. And I also wanted a chance to try working with Mantelope. So I opted a little while ago, I bought some plates of Manchalope from Tribe Yarns from Millie before she moved up to Edinburgh. Um, and this weekend I cast on, I've got another shawl, I've got another two shawls on the needles, one of which I was going to try and finish this October, but I so wanted to do the Nicole shawl, so I thought glow it. I'll knit what I want to knit. So the yarns. I've got in my very much, I made this project bag <clears throat> a long time ago when my mum and I went on a class, to a class which first taught me how to do it. So I'm using, I've got to be careful because this yarn can break. So this is Manchalope by Wool Dreamers. It's Manchega wool. So it's one of those. There's all the details. Really reasonably priced again. And lots of really nice colours. Um, but oh, I'm getting croaky now, aren't I? So the first colour I bought was this. So sort of an oatmeal colour. And you can see, most of you will know this, but it's basically two strands of unspun roving. So it is quite fragile. It's quite easy. You can't just yank it off the plate. It's quite easy to just pull apart. So you have to be quite mindful with this. And when you knit, you kind of wind it off the plate rather than just pull it as you would a twisted yarn. I was talking to my friend, um, Cherie, this week, who's just started doing some spinning. And she was saying about how much twist to put in the yarn. And I said, because um, you might know I've taught spinning classes. Um, and I said, you have to think of the twist is the glue. It's effectively the glue that keeps the fibres together. So if you've got a yarn or a fibre with no twist, there's no glue holding those together. There's enough grip between the fibres for them to cling on to each other if you handle it gently. But you start putting pressure on that and it will go. If you were to then, if you, um, okay, let's do a little demonstration. So if we now add twist, it's still going to be fairly fragile, but if I had a lot of twist, look at that, that is not going to break. So that is the glue. Yeah, little twist spinning lesson for you there. But anyway, this of course means you get a lovely airy light fabric when you knit with it. So I've got that one and the other colour I bought was pink. Really goes well with the dress. I'm wearing at the moment. So again, another dog hair. 
So we've got pink and oatmeal. Actually, do that. And I cast on at the weekend. I'm hoping that a friend might do a little knit along with me, but she might not. I don't know. So I've cast on anyway. And this is the progress I've made. It's not a huge amount. I've done the garter tab. I've done the stripes. The irony is, I realised as I was knitting this, I'm not that keen on garter stitch. But I've got to the lace panel now because there's some big lace panels and you can see we go into um, knit and purl on the lace panels and then I've got my little my little croissant can you see my croissant there so cute oh no there and then these beautiful Swarovski you can't see that one can you see that crystals I use these all the time no because you've got to love a bit of sparkle, there you go. And these are from So Sweet Violet. I've got a couple of rings. She sells them in, on little rings of kits of, I think, seven, possibly. But they're so handy, and it makes your knitting sparkle, <laughs> which is a win. But yeah, so that's as far as I've got with the Nicole shawl. Oh, I've got birds flying overhead. So I'm going to leave my croissant there, because that will show where I was at at the beginning of October and we'll see where I get. So um, that started, so that is on the October list. And I think it's on there as a finish. What have I got? Oh no, I've got Progress. Progress the Nicole Shawl. Really depends how everything else goes, I guess. Be nice to finish it, so I've got it in time for winter, obviously. Again, hoping for a really cold winter. Okay, so that's those. One more, one more knitting project for the October list that I want to finish. So let's get to. Oh, I've got another hat there. I was going to talk to you about. Perhaps I do that next time. Um, I wanted to pick up another pair of socks to try and get them finished, and. I actually made the decision I'm going to frog at least one lot of socks, which I'll tell you about briefly in a mo. I will tell you about those actually, because that's a good lesson learned with those. Um, but these ones are ones I just started willy nilly back in the beginning of the summer. I've got quite a lot of um, American dyers yarn because I went through a phase of buying a lot of Lolo Did It, uh, some Hue Loco, and a few other American dyers. So. Um, I picked this one out and just started making a sock. So it's Hugh Loco again. And this is called Squad Goals. And I decided to do a slightly, not a patterned sock, but a, um, I'm doing, well, let's show you the sock. So I haven't picked this up for some time. There you go. Oh, it's so pretty. It's such a lovely, vibrant colourway. And it's slightly, it's almost a little bit stripey, but it's really, really pretty. So this is Hue Loco Squad Goals, and that's it. Oh, look at the skein. Which is, how colourful is that? It's just glorious. So I elected to knit a, um, let's have a look, check, I'm, yeah, knit three pearl one rib. And I'm going to do that, the whole sock, in knit three pearl one rib. So I didn't do a cuff. I'm just going to knit down the leg. They won't be super long socks. Um, maybe a Christmas present, actually, for someone. But is it too much to say I want to get both socks done in October? Well, that's the, that's the plan. I want to get both socks done in October, but that is all I've got. So we'll have to see, we'll have to see. So that's that one. And those things are just, that's all the knitting that's on my October list. It's all right, isn't it? Not much there. Two hats, a shawl, finish a sweater, work on a top and knit a pair of socks. Yeah, piece of cake. 
microwave dinners for everybody. Um, all right, let's put that away there. So briefly to talk to you about this pair of socks. Oh, I didn't show you the, um, I've got to show you this project bag. Can you see that? These are characters from the Umbrella Academy, which was a really weird show on Netflix. I only watched season one, I couldn't cope with season two. No, did I watch season two? I can't remember. No, season one. Started watching season two, but abandoned it. I can't remember. Anyway, I loved season one, but that's as weird and as violent and as totally messing with your head as I could get. But there was a friend on Instagram, um, Deb, Deb, Deb. I want to say Daisy Stitches, she wasn't. She makes bags. I don't think she's on it anymore, but she loved it as well. And when she found out that I loved Umbrella Academy, she got some fabric and made us each a bag, which is very cool. I do like popular culture stuff. I do. Not that I'm into that much popular culture. I do love... I'm watching Only Murders in the Building on Disney+. Plus. Loving that. I mean, you know, anybody my age, maybe a bit younger or older, you know, Steve Martin, Martin Short, um, it's a win-win, isn't it? It really is. It's a little, some of the episodes are a bit slow, but... Oh, and the, the calibre of actors they've got into season two um, is just brilliant. So we've got the last episode over here drops... Drops, because I'm a cool kid. <laughs> Tomorrow night, it's a Tuesday night. They drop on a Tuesday night on Disney+. Plus, um, and it's the last episode tomorrow night. So it's like, oof, but I shall miss that when it's gone. I don't know if they'll make a third one. Um, right, I was hard at work, determined to finish a sock that I started last autumn. And the yarn is from Homespun House. I don't buy a lot of her yarn, but some of it I really love. And this is called, the colourway is Favourite Flannel, and it's on Gold Stellina. Um, and you'll see it's so autumnal, so seasonal. Ah, oh, you probably can't see the sparkle, but it's so lovely. And then I had that as a contrast, which was a mini from an advent a few years ago. And I was knitting the bundled up socks by Mina Phillip. I had the pattern from years ago again, another pattern I pulled out. It's been rehashed quite a few times and there's I think about three different versions of this that different designers have brought out. Um, but, so this was the sock, okay. And it's knit up really beautifully. I mean, it looks lovely. And you can see I did a fish lips kiss heel. That's fine. But I tried this on to see if the toe, you know, if I was the right place for the toe. And when I tried it on, you totally lost the pattern because I think I've knit the size too small. And if I'm honest, I chose the wrong pattern for the yarn because if I stretch this, if I put this under any kind of stretch, look at that, there's absolutely no sign of the pattern at all. Whereas when it's not under pressure, so look at the difference, you've got loose, stretched, which was very disappointing, especially since this was one of those patterns that kind of I kept having to make myself do and come back to because at the moment, to knit socks are much better with a plain sock. Um, and so I put that on and I, it was just like, well, what's the point? Absolutely no point of knitting the pattern if it's not gonna show up. Um, I suppose the only other option I could do is get Hannah to try it on and see if it doesn't stretch as much on her leg. Her foot's smaller than mine, but I think, I don't have big calves at all. But this, I knew the size I'd knit, the original socks came up a bit big, so I went down a size for this. So I think it's a combination of that. This is 60 stitches, not my usual 64. So the combination of that, 
plus the, the yarn that has just disguised any attempt at a pattern. Like I say, just look. So I think I'm going to frog these. Sad times. And I probably won't cast on this yarn again until next autumn. <laughs> but there's a lesson you do need to give some attention to the pattern you use and the yarn, whether it's a very busy yarn, the pattern isn't going to show up. So, yeah, sad times. But there you are. That's life, isn't it? Good job we like knitting. So let's just talk about my yarny giveaway briefly. And then that will be the end of the knitting section. Coming up to an hour. Hour, whatever. So, as mentioned before, I really, you know, I have a lot of stuff that I'm not good at using scraps, so I'm going to put that out there. I think I said that about my fabrics last time. Um, I'm not good at yarn scraps. I don't like knitting scrappy socks. And I don't really like knitting scrappy anything because I like to just be able to knit straight through without thinking about it. Now, probably if I went to the effort of making a magic knot ball, like a lot of people do, then it wouldn't be so bad. But I just accept the, you know, the way I am. So I generally, I'm always looking to give away um, odds and ends of scraps of socks. I mean, the socks I knit usually only take about 50 grams of yarn. So I might give away, you know, those to friends and things. Once I've made something with a yarn, that's it. Um, I have made scrappy blankets. Scrappy blankets aren't so bad, but I ended up, I was collecting so many that it was a bit overwhelming for, for blankets and things. So I had a real clear out. Anyway, all that is to say that I am not planning to use these two very generous leftovers from my Wonderland socks. Did it again, didn't I? From my Funhouse socks, Wonderland yarn, Sky yarn, Yarn Badger, Hugh Loco. So I'm going to give those away to any of you sock or shawl knitters out there, but that is self-striping sock yarn, and that's a tweed sock yarn. And to go with that, I'm going to give away a tote bag that I bought a few years back in Yarndale. I have never used, this is never used, I love this but I've got tote bags coming out of my ears. And I bought the Sinister Cats tote bag. So Sinister Cats love knitting. I don't know if you can see that. So it says here, we love knitting. Oh yes, except for maybe casting on and casting off that too. Weaving in ends. Sewing up seams, buttonholes, sleeves, yes, watching, purling, but we love knitting. <laughs> it's still actually got the label on it. It's really hefty, lovely canvas tote there. And I would love that to go to someone who will be able to use it um, either as a shopping bag or as um, uh, a big sweater project bag. Let's just fold that up a bit. So, if you would like the chance to win that or be entered for the draw, to win it, to receive it, that as well as those two skeins of yarn, I might even throw a couple of other bits in, um, then I would just ask you to leave a comment below and tell me perhaps which bits you like about this podcast, other things you might like to see in it. Any sort of thoughts, polite ones. Um, if there's something I do that um, makes it difficult to watch, do tell me, but like I say, in a polite way. Don't make me cry. Please don't make me cry. <laughs> it's not a pretty sight. Um, just leave a comment about it and I will draw a winner at the beginning of next month or at the end of October and announce it on the November list video. So there you go. I'll remind you of that at the end of the podcast. Right, that's your knitting. I'm going to make myself another drink. I'm going to have a little break, give my voice a bit of a rest. And I will be back with some stitchy, quilty, um, crafty business. 
So I see you in a mo. Okay, so I'm back. No difference to you, was there? <laughs> Made myself a cup of tea and I did the whole scene change. So I've changed from knitting to sewing and gifts and life updates and all those sort of things. So that's what we'll be moving on to. Honey has resumed her place behind me. Hopefully we'll settle. I promised her we will go out for a walk when I'm done. I'm also hoping this will work because I've recently switched, literally last week, I've switched back from Apple to Microsoft. Um, and so the video editing software, I'm going back to a program that I really liked back in the day when I used to do regular podcasts before I had to move on to iMovie. So hoping I remember to get all that, how to deal with that. But we'll see. If there's loads of like fancy effects and things coming in and out, you know I've got to grips with Adobe very quickly. If it's just like, boom, <laughs> it means I didn't. Anyway, moving on to sewing. So the first sewing item on my September list was to make the Hinterland dress out of a fabric I had purchased from Merchant and Mills back ooh, a couple of months ago in the summer. And the Hinterland dress is a pattern by So Liberated. Again, it's been around for a few years. The great thing about this is it can be adapted so many different ways. Sleeves, no sleeves, plackets, no plackets. Um, it's great and level. You can see they're confident beginner. So I've made this before in a kind of a fun quilting fabric actually, which was a bit of a wacky dress. So I have made it in the Merchant and Mills fabric. Can you see? So I'm gonna stand up and you'll be able to see if I can do this vaguely. Some of my tippy toes. We've got um, pockets, oh, let's move the right way. We've got pockets. And then if I turn around, you've got the, I put the waist tie in because this style of dress can look a bit sort of sacky on me <clears throat> or that. So I put the waist tie in just to give me a bit of shape and lengthwise, hmm, I'll upset honey if I stand on the sofa. It's down to probably mid-calf length, so I've made this one a decent length um, and I'm really, really pleased with it. It's a little bit gap, a little bit gapy here. I've got, um, sorry, I've put a t-shirt on underneath because <laughs> I only had a dark bra to wear, so um, my other ones are in the wash, so I had to put on a t-shirt to cover the dark bra. <laughs> Didn't need to know that. Um, but you can see and you can see this is a fake placket so these buttons are sewn on they're not um you know they don't undo because this scoop neck is more than adequate to get over my head so i didn't need to put the um, actual unbuttoning buttons if you see what i mean um and i didn't do the full length i only did the bodice length and just while i'm standing here and you're looking at my bust <laughs> what a treat um, I did make the bodice an inch longer, just an inch longer, because I felt with the one I made previously, um, it was a little bit high, and when you're quite heavy busted, um, you end up with your bust and your waist amalgamating if you're not careful. So I made this a little bit longer, and it's just, just right, I think, to sit, to give me enough shape. So yeah, super pleased with that. I was really pleased. I don't, I'm not a process dressmaker, I'm a product dressmaker. I don't particularly like sewing, um, certainly not clothes. I mean, to be honest, do I like machine sewing? I could take or leave it, but I do want the end product, so that's why I do it. But this dress, I really, really love, and I will be wearing it. Uh, you know, I wore it the other day when it was a bit cold, I had my DMs on and some woolly socks. So I think it's a sort of dress, it's quite heavy fabric. So, um, and I used my overlocker, which if you remember, I got for my birthday in July. And oh, what a difference it made to the seams. It's so, and it's so much fun to use. So very, very happy, very fortunate to be able to have one of those. 
But yes, so So Liberated Dress, number two, got finished. So very happy about that. Right, so that was that. What else do I need to tell you from my review? Right, okay. I will tell you first of all, oh no, we'll get to that in a sec, the hand quilting. Um, the trip around the world quilt that I needed to finish the binding on, so it was the multicolored, the rainbow spectrum one from the Laurie Holt fabric. I finished the binding, it's upstairs. I didn't bring it down because you had a good old look at it last time. If you're not sure, you can't remember, whiz back to last month's podcast. But I finished hand stitching the binding, washed it, tumble dried it, that is done. Really pleased with it. And it's actually gone away now because I put our summer quilts away and got out the autumn winter blankets and the autumn pumpkin quilts. So that's why I haven't got it down here. Uh, like I say, if you want to see what that was, have a look on last month's podcast. I have finished, there was another item which I didn't show you last month that was on the list, which was to finish um, what I call the Love Note quilt. So I used Love Note fabric from Moda, which I saw, totally fell in love with, I'm still totally in love with the colours, and decided I wanted to make a quilt for my bed this time. Didn't quite know what pattern to use, the pattern I originally was going to use was a circular one. And yeah, I just decided, no, life's too short at the moment. So one double wedding ring quilt is enough for the moment. So I made a, oh, what do they call it? Crazy nine patch? Is it crazy or scrappy nine patch? Crazy nine patch? Basically, um, yeah. And I got it back from my long arm quilting lady. And I made the binding, sewed the binding on, it's been washed and tumble dried and it is finished and ready to go on my bed just as the weather, well I say cools down, it's really warm again here but I'm going to show you that quilt and again I have to stand up, I'm standing up in this one, you won't be able to see it all but it is super duper gorgeous I think. So. I can't see what you can see, but I'm guessing you can see most of it. Yeah. So it's pretty big. It's, I would say, double, double bed size. And you can see, if I bring it quite close, the colour, I mean, the colours, is, I think, is just perfect. So you've got pinks and greens and whites, basically. Then a whole section, there's some floral. And what I love as well is that there's um, writing. I love fabric with writing on it. And you can see the quilting. She's done roses on these. So you can see the rose and then oof, the leaf. And they've been done in like this mossy green, which I think really sets it off. I chose that, I was quite brave. I didn't go for white this time. So, and the binding is part of the collection, just these little hearts. And then I elected for the back, put it the other way up, because it's upside down, to have the script on the back. So it's all and, the key thing is here, um, the, um, the book here is a Louisa M. Olcott book um, called Rose in Bloom. And it was a sequel to Eight Cousins. So it is part of the Little Women collection. I've not read it, but, and it's, it's not the entire book, obviously. It's only certain excerpts that have been repeated through the pattern. But I love it as well, and the main character they talk about is Aunt Clara, so I just thought it has to be. And you can see that sort of, try not to jog the table. Can you see the mossy green of the quilting there? It's just so pretty. So yeah, this massive, gorgeous pile of cuddliness is going to be going on my bed, which I'm very happy about. So, I haven't put a label on, I think I might put a quilt label on that, but 
So yeah, super, super pleased with that. So that was another big project off the list there, which is great. Um, really like that. So happy with that. I've got another one at the Long Arm Quarter at the moment, which is a more wintry Christmas one. It's a blue and white one. We're using the Crystal Lane fabric collection by Bunny Hill Designs. But I should get that back this month sometime. I told her there was no hurry. But I will then, probably that will be on my November list to bind so we can have it in the living room for Christmas. So that was that one. So that's the quilt kind of, that's the machine quilting action. Um, On to um, the hand sewing. So if you recall, I started last month making a quilt as you go quilt. Um, from the idea, I took the idea from Emma at Vintage Sewing Box. She has her podcast and tutorials and all sorts of things. And she made this quilt as you go. Um, or she was making one. This is my lovely basket here, which I picked up in an antique shop for not very much money at all. And I decided I was going to, I think I did talk about it last time. I was going to make a quilt in line with my attempt at losing weight. So if you don't like talking about losing weight and body size, then probably best to skip on. But you know, no biggie. It's, I'm not judging anybody or anything. This is my personal choice. Basically, I had um, I had an annual blood test, and they identified that I had high cholesterol, which was the first time that anything like that has, has sort of happened. And I kind of knew I wanted to lose some weight. We we had such a rough first six months of the year. And everything kind of went out the window in terms of my health because I was focusing on Gary's health. And uh, I thought, no, I really need to pull in the reins a bit. Again, those of you who've been with me for a long time know that I did Weight Watchers a few years ago very successfully. And so I decided I would use the Weight Watchers program again and that I worked out that I wanted to do this slowly over a year. So not, uh, I mean, obviously it's about healthy eating but I wanted to just not panic, just chip away at a few pounds and try and lose some over the course of a year. And I thought I wanted to make a quilt because I can, I can apply patience to stitching and to knitting. So I wanted to be able to apply patience to weight loss and healthy eating. That was my plan. Sorry if I'm repeating that. I can't remember whether I had done this when I spoke to you about it last month. I had bought some autumn, I think I had, I think I'd done the middle bit of this quilt. So the idea is for each quarter of a pound I lose, then I can add a hexagon onto this quilt as you go quilt. I'm woefully behind because I didn't think I'd be losing weight much. <laughs> so I'm about 10, about 10 hexagons behind of joining. But I'll show you what I've got for now. And it's that, oh, there we go. I'm just joining in random patterns as, to, as I go. So if you look at, I think I showed you the fox and the mouse. These are so cute. So these are all Accufactum fabrics that I get from Elmhurst Fabrics. And the fox. And the little, oh, come that way, the little munchkins with their acorns there, or in the walnut shell. And then we've got some, all right, the birds I thought were really gorgeous. And then on the back, I'm using Adita Sitar Earth Tones fabrics. And I'm just quilting about quarter or a half an, an inch in on each one so you can see and I'm choosing oftentimes a contrasting thread I'm actually using embroidery floss just held double or cross stitch that one you can see I've done in red this one I think I've done well that's in a pale green you can't see it so well that one oh, what's that one done in oh that's in a green as well um, so some of them I've done, that one I decided to use a sort of an autumn yellow. 
Look at those little mice. So yeah, I'm just chipping away at these, but I actually have, I was working on these yesterday, but I just, they take obviously quite a long time to sew on because once you start sewing, you've got three or four sides of a hexi to sew on. But I have got, all of these were up until today, I was behind. These are all similar. Another little, and he just looks so cute. Look. Um, and then some fillers with the little dots, and then another fairy by a toadstool. So they all need to be joined. And the great news is this morning that I've lost another pound and a quarter this week, but that's five more hexes. So I need to make five more and add that to the pile to join. So it's really, really good. Um, it's just chipping away slowly, uh, but obviously I've, I had underestimated, I'm sure it, you know, it's not going to keep going this consistently, but so far I had this and it's lovely. I really enjoy this. I love hand stitching at the moment. Can't get enough of it. So that was that one. So still on the thing of hand stitching, another thing on my list was to work on my So A Little Happiness and get Autumn Sampler Mini Quilt from Pretty Fabrics and Trims from Sarah. And I think her, I'll put her details down below anyway. I had this kit and I think I'd done one thing on it and I wanted to get this done. I have not finished this. I got carried away with other things. Really, you say to yourself, really? You got distracted and carried away? Surely not. So, um, but I did do a lot. And then the last week, just last week, because I was thinking, yeah, I'll get this done. Last week I got distracted by the next thing I'm going to show you. So um, I didn't get it finished, but I have got a lot done. So there we go. So let's start there. So you can see I've got the cup of hot chocolate, the umbrella, the basket of apples, which is, hang on, I'm going to have to stand up again, excuse me, the basket of apples, which is so cute, the leaves, uh, the blackberry and the jam, the kettle, I'm halfway through a Wellington boot, that's where I stopped, and then I've done the mushrooms and the acorns. So, and you see this magnetic, where is it, here? stitch holder, uh, sorry, needle holder, is from, again, from So Sweet Violet, from Jules and Bryony. But, so I've made good progress. I've got, I've only got three more. I've got to finish the Wellingtons and then I've got pumpkin patch here. Actually, I'll show you on the picture. That's better, isn't it? Ooh, let's find a picture. Ah. So you can see, I've got the pumpkin patch, which is really lovely. I've got the sort of wreath, the floral wreath, the Wellingtons to finish. And actually, I think that's, oh, and there's, there's actually a little candle in there. And then it'll be attaching this fob here, it, the star and the heart, all of which are fabric. And you applique those on, either, apart from that one that hangs loosely. And then obviously quilting it and back, backing it and quilting it. So, I had thought I was going to stop that now until next year. But you know what, I'm not. I'm going to just sit down and get that done because I love it and I really enjoy doing it. So, I was going to focus on getting the Christmas one finished. But if I get that one done now, I can start the Christmas. Oh, the Christmas one is halfway done from a few years ago. And I can pick that up through November. Oh, some scissors. I've also, I used my Huswif that I made, which is also from a kit from Sarah, which was one of the first things I bought that has, um, that's a little bit, has all these lovely, um, pockets and bits and pieces in them so I keep that here for for this particular project 
So that was that, pretty fabrics and trims. If you want to dip your toe into embroidery, Sarah's a great place to start. She's got some lovely bits and even quilting, hand quilting, because that's how I, the first ones I've done the spring and the summer, and that was my first effort at hand quilting. Um, and it was not, it was doable. It wasn't overwhelming at all. So I do recommend that. So that was her, or that one. I was doing, if you remember, the little mini hexes, a pattern with mini hexes. That's been shelved because I don't need to get that done now. I can play with that next year. I, I wasn't sure about the fabric and what I wanted to do with it. So I just thought, no, put that away for next year. Absolutely fine. But while I'm talking, back to Jules and Bryony. Jules' daughter Bryony, who works with her at So Sweet Violet, check out their Instagram post because um, Bryony has just done one with all the minis and Liberty fabric with all the little tiny half inch or even quarter inch hexagons. I'm not sure, I can't remember now. And they put it in a frame with Liberty fabric and they framed it and I think she said there's 300 mini hexes in there. It's absolutely beautiful. So do check out, go over and give us some love for that because she certainly deserves it. Um, right, so that's that. Do, 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 do. Another thing I wanted to do that I'm not going to show you again because I'm just a bit of a tease like that. My hand stitch grandma's flower garden quilt. Oh, I really don't want to show you. Can I show you that? Okay, we'll come back to that because I need to go get it, but I will show you. Hmm. No, I'll show you next month. Um, I've added the border to it basically. So I'd finished the hexagon pattern in the middle and I've added a border and I'm so excited about it. I so love that. Now that whole project is going to be hand quilted. It's a biggie. I bought the batting and I bought the backing. So I now need to baste it and then start hand stitching it, which I'm thinking is probably not gonna be till the new year. So that will be something I can look forward to doing. I'm dying to get going on that, but um, that will sit there for a bit. I'll have a little rest and I'll get into that in January, I think. So that was that. What else did I, ah, so now some kind of crafty bits, I think. What else was on my list? I've talked about Love Note, that one, that one, that one, Hinterland Dress, Border on Hexi Quilt, good. I have finished, I did make, and it wasn't on the list, it was gonna be on this month's list, another quilt top, but it's a Christmas present for a friend, and I need to make sure that friend doesn't watch the podcast before I show you. If you remember a few years ago, I'd made a quilt for my son, Joe, and I showed it on the podcast because I was like, who never watch this? Turns out he watched it. What are you gonna do? So um, I'm gonna check with this friend to make sure she doesn't watch the podcast and then I can show it this quilt top. It's a throw. There's a few coming up that I'm making for Christmas. Um, one definitely, well, I'm making one for my dad, which I'll tell you about in a sec. He won't watch the podcast. One, the other two friends, I'm not sure. So I may have to hold those back till after Christmas to show you. But for my dad, I'm going to be making the Kafer set uh, seed packet quilt, which those of you who follow Kate from The Last Homely House will have seen on her podcast. That's where I saw it and got hooked. My dad used to live in a bungalow with a very big garden. He loves gardening, always has done. Then he and my mum moved to a flat for practical reasons. Lovely, lovely flat, but no garden. And I think he missed it, but he's also an amateur artist and he loves colour. He, he's all about colour. And since we lost my mum, which was last year, um, Dad's just starting to put some of his colours into the flat to sort of, he had to tone it down a bit because mum was, <laughs> mum loved his art, but you know, it, some of it is very bold. Um, so I thought actually giving him, making him the K facet seed packet quilt, um, if I can get my act together and get the video editing software to work, I'll put a, I'll put a picture of it um, up here, but it's basically huge flower heads. Um, the actual quilt design itself is very straightforward, so it's not a really long, complex one. But I want to make that for him for Christmas so he can throw it either over his tea or on his bed and it'll remind him of flowers and garden and bright colours. So that's one for Christmas, that 
I'm going to hopefully cut out this month. I've got another one I'm going to cut out, which is from a book which I will talk to you about in a moment, the Acufactum Collection. Um, I think, yeah, so quilt-wise, that's it. I've decided against making the, the Adita Sitar Noel quilt because I think I'll end up rushing it. So I'm going to actually start that probably in the summer next year so that I've got it because it will be one I have long armed um, and Mel could be quite busy. So I'm going to leave that. But the one I want to make, um, and this is this can sort of merge in with some uh, two new books I bought that I want to show you. The first one is this one, Winterfroden. And this is from Acufactum. And yes, it's in German. But I loved it so much, I bought another one. <laughs> I bought this one, which is Christmassy. Oh, look at those little people, those little animals. It is just so beautiful. The whole aesthetic of this just got me straight away. Now, I bought this one, the first one, Winterfloyden, I bought. Um, I bought this actually on Amazon, but I know that Elmhurst Fabrics have got some in now, so um, you could possibly get one from there. Um, in fact, no, I bought Winterfloyden from Amazon, but then this one I bought from a shop in Europe somewhere um, and they keep sending me emails which is why I can have a look and tell you what the place was because I think they sell the fabric as well. Here we go, Casa Sanina, Casa Sanina. So it's, I'll put the, that's the name. And I got it from Europe and it was very reasonable shipping and I didn't have to pay any um, import duties because now we're not in the European Union. Sometimes shipping from European countries can be a bit pricey, but this was fine. Um, it took about a week to come. Um, but anyway, the reason I bought this book was to make this quilt on the back. Now there's better picture. They don't have one of it totally um, sort of hanging really which is a bit of a shame because you could do with a full length picture of it but there you go I do that because the instructions are there so you can see and then oh no sorry wrong bit ah, what am I doing there we go there you go you can see it on the bed there I oh, I just adore the aesthetic of that. So there's also loads of projects in there that are just so darned gorgeous. They've got this advent calendar and they have actually got, you can find a picture, they've got all the cross stitch charts in the back of this. So it's brilliant, you know, the, the value for money this is, I can't begin to tell you, if you like cross stitch as well as stitching, there's a couple of knitting patterns. Um, I mean, these, I think. How cute is that? Um, I'm just trying to find a picture of the advent calendar to show you. There's a scarf, a wrap. Ooh, there's a recipe of food. Recipe of food, what's that all about? There's a table, a pair of socks, I hadn't Clearly, I haven't spent enough time looking at this, but, oh, there's the advent calendar. So, lots of kisses for advent. If you like sort of muted effects, um, so all the cross-stitching of the numbers and everything, the charts are in the back, and then just look, wouldn't you just want to make all of those? Well, I do anyway, so <laughs> I have bought the fabric. I managed to source the fabric for the quilt anyway. So I'm gonna be cutting that out this month. Not sure whether I'll be stitching it together. We'll have to see how the time goes. 
And similarly, uh, well not similarly, I have ordered, I managed to source a lot of their Christmas fabric from an Etsy seller. And again, I'll put it in, look at that. Uh, just, okay, what was I gonna show you? I thought at the back here, they had a big chart of all their flower of all their fabrics, but it's those you can't really see. But basically, check out the Accufaction website. They're German, so anybody watching this in Germany, you're on a win. But it's the whole aesthetic, and what I fell in love with in particular. There, that's my templates with those hearts. Now. Hand stitch or stitched hearts aren't anything new, are they? But these are backed with like a teddy plush fabric, which I oh, just, well, that was it for me. I just thought it looked so gorgeous. Um, there's one more thing on here that I wanted to share with you. Those as well. So, um, yeah. Oh, there's another lovely quilt. Oh. You just look at that. Anyway, as you can see, well and truly, it is in German. And no, I don't speak German. But by the power of Google Translate, I've sorted it out and I can do it. So I do, uh, you know, um, encourage you. Do you know you can take a photo of the text and put it through Google Translate and they give you a photo of it all translated? Genius. So, yeah, I'm going to be making some of those. Now, Moving on to what I have actually made, as it was October or September and not Christmas yet, and my Christmas fabric hasn't arrived, I thought I'd have a go at making some, some little things. So I have made, this is my little silver tray, which I want to fill up with these hearts. And I just think they're so cute. So we've got, now I use Bell and Boo fabric because I absolutely love it. So, and that's the, the fairy back. So there's that one. There's that one. I love vintage children. Oh, there's an end there, hang on. I love vintage fabric of children playing. Then I made a couple of big ones. So there's that one. They're apple picking, a little foxy, and so that's all furry. And then this one, he's up a tree, she's up a tree. So we've got at the moment in my little autumn heart collection, we've got three, four. So I want to make some more of those, but I also want to make a lot of Christmas ones. I would like to get a round uh, basket, oh, just bit my mouth, a round basket to put these in, a bit like in that picture. But for now, they can go in my silver tray. And I just think, oops, they're so pretty. They're so quick and easy to make. If you've got fat quarters laying around, you can get this Teddy plush that I got is from Elmhurst Fabrics, and they don't have a lot. But this, if you just Google Teddy Plush or Teddy Fabric, you can get this fur, Teddy Bear fur, from lots of places, I think. So, yeah, super excited by those. And I'm thinking Christmas, all bets are off. <laughs> so then I discovered, um, I, didn't discover, I rediscovered a maker called Minky Kim, who is... Zuriana on Instagram, I think, and she does loads of patterns. And I downloaded the pattern. I mean, there's lots of these around, but I downloaded this pattern for Fabric Pumpkins. That's her. And the key with this, isn't it, is you need to have a little pile. You need to have lots of these things. I've only made one pumpkin because I thought I really need to get on with some of my bigger projects, but I did make my pumpkin. I love it. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. 
I used Lurry Holt gingham fabric. Then I put my little stem there. And I actually added some, when I stuffed it, I added some rice to make it a little bit heavier. So rice in the bottom. And I also drew, um, I've just had a dead fly fall on me from the ceiling. That's nice, isn't it? Okay, don't look on the floor. Cut. Um, we have a lot of spiders in our vaulted ceiling. And this time of year, quite often, we get desiccated remains of flies and things just dropping. <laughs> sounds so gross, doesn't it? It's fine. Um, anyway, yeah, so I pulled that through just to sink that down a little bit to make it a bit more concave. But isn't that cute? So that's fabric and she does add batting and then you stuff it. But I would like to make some more of those, but we'll see. Um, I do have to be careful because so many things I want to make. Anyway, and then lastly on the pumpkin theme, and again, this was from Minky Kim as well. Um, I downloaded a template for a pattern. They're paid for patterns for a pumpkin placemat. Oh, I've got a very loud magpie in the garden now. Um, and I decided to do it. Hers isn't quilt as you go, but I decided to do a quilt as you go pattern. And again, I use Laurie Holt fabrics, but hmm, got a bit of teddy plush in my mouth. But I saw that and I, I'm not sure. Does that look like a tomato? It's meant to be a pumpkin. But when you turn it over to what was going to be the back, which I now use as the front, it looks like a pumpkin. Ta-da! And we're back to the beautiful Bell and Boo fabric, the autumn fabric, which again, I just adore. I think maybe it's better that the stem is on the back so you can see this dip here gives it a better shape, whereas that side, I put it there. I don't know, it's two-sided anyway. So yeah, I made that place mat or table, centre table mat really, I'm probably going to use that for. Whew, oh, I'm getting warm now, getting excited. No, not at all. So, I think there's only one more thing in terms of creating to share with you which is Luna Lapin. Now I did put, oh, I might leave those off, making my face sweat, just because I can't see what I'm doing. <laughs> might improve the quality. I put on Instagram a little while ago, when, when I went to the Festival of Quilts, and I was actually up there with Jules from So Sweet Violet and Bryony, and they hooked me into the whole Luna Lapin rabbit hole literally and ended up buying a lunar kit to make which I duly made straight away actually can I just say Jules <laughs> she hasn't made hers yet um, and I did post a picture no I want to go there let's find my Luna. there she was on Instagram so that was Luna in all her created naked glory on Instagram and that was as far as I'd got so when I made my hinterland dress I thought if I'm making a dress I really need to make Luna dress <laughs> of course you do so I had a kit of course I did for a dress and this is Luna's dress which I have to say, I think it's absolutely adorable. You like it too? Yes, I do. You don't talk like that, do you? No. So look at that little dress and these teeny tiny buttons on the dress. And yes, it was an absolute pig and a poke to make. And I sat there thinking, why am I making a dress for a toy rabbit? So she's not even a toy rabbit. She's a grown-up rabbit because they suggest, because she's hand-stitched, they suggest you don't give her to children. 
but um, how blooming, absolutely, gorgeously, adorable is she? Give us a twirl. Give us a twirl. Look at that, you're going to show us your tail. Beep. Sorry. Need to make some underwear, don't I? But how stinking cute is she? I could sit her on the table in front so you could just look at her. I would, but if I sit her there, <laughs> you just see her ears. There you go. <laughs> huh. um, yeah, things have got to be done, haven't they? So yeah, I made that dress and it was very fiddly, but I have to say, completely worthwhile. I love it. So now I'm thinking in October, I do need to make her another outfit. I bought the books because when you buy from Cool Cool Crafting, I'll put the link below. Again, it's not new. This is just me coming to, part, to the party late. Um, you can buy the kits or you can just buy the fabric kit. So the kits with the pattern or just the fabric. And the kits with the patterns or the patterns cost about a tenner. So I actually bought the books. The first book I bought at the show which was that one, making Luna lap in. And that's got the instructions in to make the actual bunny. I mean, look, how crazy is that? I've so many grandchildren. And it's not happening anytime soon. So, <laughs> sorry kids, but it's, you know. Um, so that one's there. But then I bought, to get the pattern for the dress, I bought, making new friends and you can see so that's the blue dress there but I got the kit with the red because I thought the red was really cute I love that one so all the patterns for those clothes are in here and actually in fact yeah Sarah signed it Sarah Peel is the designer of all these things and if you didn't know um, if you're like me and you've been sort of living under a rock and didn't know about Luna Lapin, all these books contain patterns, stories as well, stories about the characters. I'm not going to hold that too close, but every character and every outfit has a little story that goes with it. It's so cute. It reminds me a bit of back in the day when Kerry Lord started creating Edward's Menagerie with crochet. She would put a little description of each of the characters and it just makes such a difference. It just personalises them. For me anyway, I'm a sucker for things like that. And then because I had a couple of the kits for this, I realised I had to purchase this one, which is a year of making. Now I actually have the kit to make the winter coat and the skating dress. So I'm thinking I might make that, uh, that is it. It's this one, oh, this was quite an expensive one. I'm gonna cover, cover up the front. It was 20 pounds, okay. But I bought this, I bought this, at, oh, sorry, I haven't taken it out of the pack. So it's like a black watch tartan, but you can see there the dress. So you get the fur lined or the faux fur the black watch tartan, the navy blue for the coat, and the bow. Um, and yeah, I just fell in love with that because basically that's what I'd like to wear. I would like that if anybody wants to make me that <laughs> in a grown up size. Um, so I may, if things go well this month, I may actually make this up for Luna this month. The other one I've got, which will be the December one, is the dreamy dress, which is her party frock, which again is so cute, but I'm doing it in the blueberry colours, which I really love. I love that fabric there. So that will probably be for December. And then I've got, yeah, there's more, because Jules bought me as a present when we were there. She bought me the April Showers Anorak. So these are all still in their wrapping, so you get a bit of glare, a bit of reflection. I don't know, can I put that on there? And I bought, when I was there, the underwear 
or the nightwear because I thought that was really cute. But I think, and I've got that in the blue, it gets so lovely. So, yeah, because, you know, why not? It's all just lovely. So I've got the books, I've got the patterns, and I've got, sorry, just here, the fabrics. But that was the September dress I made for Luna Lapin. Right, oh, I should have said, my friend Irina came round for a knit, a knit morning, a knit and natter. And while she was here, because I haven't sewn the ends in, she made a little cardigan, the little cardigan for Luna, which I also had the pattern for. <laughs> so I need to, I blocked it, but I need to sew buttons on and um, weave in the end. But yeah, so thanks, Irina. Okay, so are we there? Are we done? So that's it. So you know, basically for October then, finish the apple pie hat, Knit the Tetagusha, Tetagausha hat. Finish Koiva sweater. Progress my Nicole shawl. Progress the 1908 top. Finish the squad goal socks. Finish the quilt Christmas present for my friend. Cut out both the seed packet quilt top and the Accufactum quilt top. Make another outfit for Luna. And finish 20 squares on the Squiddle Village blanket. Finish the autumn sampler and continue with my quarter pound quilt. I could say microwave dinners for everybody. <laughs> oh my goodness, I just uh, I love it. I'm very fortunate in that I'm at home most of the time. I would like to go out a bit more. I was realising, I was looking through all my old photos the other day from the past sort of 10 years. Um, I realised I was always at craft shows, teaching, um, meeting out with crafting friends. I had, oh, before COVID this was, I was doing so much. Um, and compared to now, when I'm kind of like a bit of a hermit, really. But, you know, we go through seasons, don't we? Life dictated what my life is going to be like um, at the moment. I am toying with the idea of going up to the knitting and stitching show this week at the Alexandra Palace. It depends on how I feel and also there's train strikes so we'll just have to see but it would be nice. I'm, I know a few of my friends are going to be up there vending so I could go and catch up. Um, but yeah it would be nice to have a crafting group again but there you go. We move on don't we? I'm actually currently a little bit of life stuff now then so I'm currently um, most of you will know that I'm a Christian and I do a lot of Bible journaling, Bible study, and I use the Creative Faith Company um, journals because I really love them. Hilary is such a sweet young woman who has got this, this business going. She's got an Etsy shop, but I have to buy them on Amazon. She doesn't ship to the UK, so I buy her journals on Amazon. So the one I'm working on at the moment is this one, Pumpkin Spice and Time with Jesus Christ. And then I also keep a concurrent fall journal, <clears throat> which is not necessarily about um, scripture and faith. It's more about the autumn. So um, see, I've put, <clears throat> I've pressed some leaves from our garden and put those in there. Um, there are some prayers in there, but there's also, let's find some other prompts that she gives you. There's gratitude, there's a space for books that you can read. It's very much down to you to decorate it as you will. There's a full bucket list there. Um, there's Hall Halloween. I don't do Halloween, but there's Halloween stuff there. There's a music playlist you can write in. But the cool one, which I will do, because I always do this one, the full movie bucket list, so I always complete any for cheesy Hallmark films I watch in that one. So I've been busy doing that. I really enjoy doing that. Um, I also have been, along with my weight loss journey, I have been doing the Conqueror Challenge, which is on the interwebs. It's an online thing and they're virtual walking challenges. So basically, um, oh, I'll put the link below and if you're interested, check it out. You sign up, you do have to pay because you get a medal at the end. That's the only reason I do it. Um, you sign up to do 
a virtual walk and it's just judged by it is down to trust you know um so if we say i decided to walk to do the niagara falls challenge which means that i wanted to walk 122 kilometers all around the falls all up into the states back down into canada and what they do is that you track your steps or your kilometers every day so you might do it specifically or intentionally so you might say right every day i'm going to run 5k that's not me um, i wear a little pedometer and i try to walk at least two kilometers every day and then i upload that to my challenge and it tells me whereabouts on the map i would be if i were walking around niagara falls and they give you um, a google maps overlay you can look at satellite view you can look at street view they give you all the factoids about, I learned quite a lot about Niagara Falls because they send you postcards as you get to each, uh, virtual postcards as you get to each milestone. And then when you finish and you set your own timetable, you know, is there's no great pressure. It's all self-imposed. Um, when you complete it, they send you a medal. Now, here it is. Are you ready for this? This is my medal. For completing the Niagara Falls challenge. It's so good. It's really heavy. It is really heavy. It's totally made out of metal. None of your plastic stuff. And then on the back, there's a lovely engraving because I learned about the Queen of the Mist and what's her name? Annie Edison Taylor, the lady who went over the falls in a barrel. Why? But you know. But so that comes on that so that's really part of what you're paying for um, so if you've got that sort of money and it, it's or if you've got that money to spare and it's something that will motivate you it's really really good to do um, so I have now signed up for the three national park challenge which is oh my goodness what is it it's um, a blanked brain fog. What am I walking at the moment? Yellowstone. I'm walking through Yellowstone Park at the moment. I'm also going to be um, walking through Yosemite Park. And the other one, hang on a minute, Conqueror. Conqueror Virtual Challenges. Let's find it. View all the challenges. Hannah is currently doing a game, uh, not Game of Thrones, a Lord of the Rings one. She's done the Shire, she's done the Hobbit. She's walked through the Shire. She obviously doesn't get a street view. <laughs> but she is walking across. And the one she did, she's done one Lord of the Rings one. And on her medal, I have to tell you, because these things are so clever, there was a little envelope and in it, you could actually take out a ring. It was a little red, uh, a little gold ring with the engraving on the inside. Not to wear, it's obviously just a little novelty thing um here we go let me find you so you know which other park there's so many on here i mean my hope i want to work up to actually walking that's yosemite yosemite yosemite, yosemite. um i want to walk um the camino de santiago but um uh, that's about 700 kilometers so all minor a little bit. So Yellowstone Park is 121 kilometers or 75 miles. Yosemite is 44 miles. And what's the other one I'm doing then? Not the Grand Canyon. There's so many of these. A lot of them, well, they're Europe, they're, oh, I don't know. I don't know when the next one is. I don't know what I'm walking. But if you look, you can... These are all different challenges you can scroll through. These are the medals. And then when you get, um, when you sign up and you get the Conqueror app or the Conqueror Virtual Challenge app, I'll just show you. So, this is me currently, and that's my progress. And then if I went to um, the satellite overlay and zoomed in, you can zoom in much more than that, but you can kind of see, I don't know, just think it's really good, but you're probably thinking, what's this got to do with crafting? 
Fact is, I achieved the Niagara one, and that's really good, and that goes hand in hand with me trying to get healthier and more fit. Um, finally, book. Should I tell you a book I'm reading? I am reading The uh, Last Devil to Die, which is the Richard Osmond fourth book of the Thursday Murder Club. Struggling a little bit because he spends a lot of time with the character who has Alzheimer's and sadly my mum had Alzheimer's and it's it's quite it's quite close to them. I'm finding it really moving. So um yeah, I'm struggling, but it's I mean it's brilliantly written, but it's 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 hitting me a bit. But I will carry on. The story the character's absolutely brilliant. If you haven't read any of those books, I really urge you to because they're just fantastic. Um, but I'm also reading this book. <laughs> I just... It's really, really good. Um, I've only read the first chapter and the introduction. And it's so interesting about why none of us can really focus on something or concentrate on something for any length of time. I certainly have a problem and I wanted to know whether it was just my age, whether it's the fact that I have fibromyalgia or whether it's um, a cultural society thing. So if you're interested in kind of um, things like that, this is a really good book. It'll be one I dip into, I'll read it. I read um, a book called Digital Minimalism a couple of years ago, which again, really opened my eyes about um, mobile phones and advertising and social media. And so this one is really not just about that, but obviously it has a lot to do with all the information that's thrown at us constantly, including podcasts. I'm going to stop. I, I was going to talk to you about my afternoon tea at the Ritz, but I'm not. It was fabulous, and that's all you need to know. So I think we're probably on to two hours now. But hey, it's once a month. That's like one episode a week for half an hour at a time. So that's all right, isn't it? I hope you found it interesting. Thank you so much for joining me. And thank you again from last for last month for all the lovely supportive comments you've got. Um, that really meant a lot. So thanks again for that. Um, oh, I was going to talk about other podcasts that I watch. I was thrilled to see Deborah and Emily podcast again from Meanwhile at the Castle. If you haven't seen their podcast, go back and watch all the old ones. They don't do so many podcasts together now because they're busy lives, you know, but they've also got individual podcasts, so look for those. Um, obviously, Jules, So Sweet Violet, does her journal. And Cherie, my friend Cherie, who is Ollie and Bella, does a podcast, but you must know about that because she has a bajillion follow, bajillion subscribers. So um, that's about that. Don't forget the giveaway. So for the tote bag and the sock yarn, um, leave a comment below with any thoughts about what you liked about the podcast, whether you'd like to see anything new or different or whether there's just too much overall. Um, it's really about my crafting. So it's not even, I wouldn't even say it's specifically a knitting podcast anymore. It's sort of a crafting and lifestyle type of thing, isn't it? But yes, yeah, so I hoped you, I hoped you enjoyed watching it. I'm going to stop saying that. I'm going to say goodbye. Have a lovely month and I will see you at the beginning of November. Ta-da!